started. All right. Hello, Kinsley. Oh, I can hear. I can hear Kinsley. Oh, yeah, you can hear me. I just need to talk a bit louder. I'll get there. <laughs> How you doing, man? You're you're in Miami, right? I'm loving it. How is Miami treating you? Great. I had some Cuban coffee this morning, so I got a kick. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So let's talk about. It's kind of shiny. So it's nice. Let's talk. Let's talk about one love. Uh, you're of course a professional actor, and uh, as a professional actor, you have to be prepared for. For any kind of role, of course, any kind of role that is interesting, interesting for you, and you portray already Malcolm X, you portray already like Barack Obama, but Bob Marley portraying Bob Marley in a movie that is like completely dedicated to his legacy, is it's quite challenging. So, how do you prepare first? How do you prepare like mentally for this role? Good question. Uh, you just I, I musically, Bob's an artist. And I, I, you know, he spent his life writing songs and and playing the guitar, and I don't know what that means. You know, I don't know what that feels like. So, I guess getting a guitar was the first thing, and 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 I, I really wanted to learn how to play music and how to sing. It was really important to me, not because I was ever gonna sing in the movie, but I wanted to sing on set. I needed to sing on set because when you watch Bob. You know, there's something so deeply spiritual happening within him when he's sharing his music with audiences that I needed to understand what I felt like. So musically, there was a huge journey. I mean, you could spend 10 years and you'd still not get anywhere. So that was one of the first things different to Malcolm. And um, and then also the culture and the language. You know, Jamaica, yeah, sure. The patois. <laughs> it's, a whole, it's a language. It's not an accent. It's a language. So to understand that, it's, just not, it's the same thing really, almost like if you were said to do a movie in Spanish. Um, I would be starting from scratch. You have to really learn the language. You know, where I'd say Jamaican Patois was kind of even more difficult is you have to unlearn all of the things that you have imposed on it that are wrong. So a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions about Jamaican Patois. And it's English based, so it's deceptive. Yeah. If there are English words, you think that you know how to do it, and you really don't. Not you, but one. Um, <laughs> I, so, I, I know how to do it. <laughs> yeah. So the music and the patois were like, first and foremost, how are we going to approach these things? You know? So you, so you didn't, you didn't like play any guitar at all? You, you, you're not a musician at all. Wow, wow, wow. And then you, 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 you you're playing guitar in the movie, right? You have to play guitar. Yeah. yeah. And they kept some of my vocals in there, which was never supposed to happen. Ziggy and Steven were supposed to do the voice in when, when I'm playing in the house. But they, towards the final cut of the film, they decided to leave it as my voice. So um, I'm glad I took the singing lessons. Yes, that's very, that's something very interesting because I don't know, I it, it's just, this is a professional job, of course, and then uh, there's like a, it seems that it sometimes it's well most of the times it's just like during the during the live uh, during the concert it's just like Bob Marley's original voice, but there's some more, more like intimate scenes, right? Where you're like I don't know, there's a scene where you're talking, your character is is, is talking to Rita and playing the acoustic guitar. There's another scene uh, during a rehearsal where you guys are like playing Exodus. So were you singing there? Or it was like a blend of your voice and oh no, that's that's purely my voice. That's that's cool. That's cool because it oh that that takes you to a different level, right? Because so that's, that's able to do that in, su in such intimate moments is 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 is, is great. Tiggy was supposed to put his voice with Stephen's voice and Bob's voice and my voice together. But yeah. they 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 decided to leave my voice so yeah. So, how long did you train in the in the vocal part and and, and like in the guitar playing? April to December, so I had a little while. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And before that, you didn't even sing in the shower. <laughs> I mean, maybe, but not very well. So, how was how was the training in terms like musical terms? I mean, of course, you have to listen a lot of like Bob Marley's music, 
Yeah. And then practice, and then practice with the coach, and then practice at home. How was it? I had a great teacher. Yeah. I had a great teacher. I spent many, many hours, many hours. Um, yeah, every day. I'm not just talking about the psychology of singing and where Bob is singing from, rather than the tone of my voice. It's how Bob sings is that he's singing from a place of such depth um, that you can't really copy him. Um, yeah. And it's different when you're singing in your bedroom and you're trying to compose music is different to when you're on stage and you're singing to communicate a message. So Ziggy was there on those days and he really trained me as well with the guitar and he just kept saying, bring it down, take it down, take it down, take it down. Um, less, 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 less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you learn? Uh, how familiar were you? I mean, everybody knows Bob Marley, but how familiar were you with him and how what do you learn playing him? I, I suppose you learn like many things, but how you learn about him and what do you learn about like the Rastafarian movement? What do you think the movie can do for the Rastafarian movement? I feel like everything I learned about Bob, I learned for the first time. And I learned about Bob not through the books really or the documentaries, but I learned about him on a personal level and who he was as a human being through his, uh, his family and, and And his friends and people who loved Bob and spent time with him and who knew him were the people who I had many, many conversations with um, and who shared with me, you know, how Bob was outside of the public, uh, outside of his public persona. Yeah, it, it, it took a little bit to finish about the... Uh, there's some, I mean, everybody that knows what Marley knows that he wasn't perfect, of course. So there's some scenes in the movie, I'm not going to spoil it. There's some movies that my some people that are not so familiar with him could be surprised, right? When he's like kind of going through the motions of being kind of aggressive or doing something that he wasn't supposed to do. So how do you guys approach those scenes? Like uh, you with the director, with Marcus, how, how was it? It's great, you know, like, like all great artists, Bob was... Um... It was complicated and he, he was a human being, you know, he wasn't perfect. And it's really important that in a film where the intention is really to celebrate him and to celebrate his music and, and, and the culture um, with his family, it was very important that we also, you know, made sure that all of the colors were there. You know, it was sure. just a moment that we, you know, the audience get to see that. It was. I couldn't do it any other way. Um, it's just important for, you know, the, the complexity is what makes him great. You know, Bob's music is so uh, transcendental and has vibrated all around the world. Not anything other than because of who Bob was. You know, that's a human. Um, and he was a human being. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you very much for your time and for your acting and Have a have a good rest of the day. Thank you again. Take care.